All right. <coughs> ay, ay, ay. So I will begin. I will begin with a begin with a word of prayer. So, Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this day again. I I thank you for these students. Just ask you to bless our work today. Help us to just understand the math together and uh, help me not to cough too much. And in my prayer, Lord Jesus, Amen. Amen. So I am sick. So in the interest of not hacking too much, I am going to partake in some of this delicious bubble gum. Don't tell my son, my six-year-old son as this is his gum. Which he likes, of course, because you can blow the bubbles. All right, so we know how to solve quadratic equations, some of us. And um, I would recommend you learn how if you haven't. Let's try to solve some word problems here. Section 1.5, number... Let's work number 23, just for kicks. Dimensions of a parking lot. A parking lot has a rectangular area of 40,000 square yards. The length is 200 yards more than twice the width. Find the dimensions of the lot. So, you look at this problem and you say, what on earth does this have to do with quadratic equations, right? But it's got everything to do with it. Let's draw a picture. So, let's see here, this is number Section 1.5, number 23. So we've got this picture. So let's say this is the length, this is the width. How are these related? What's it tell us? What are dimensions of a parking lot, by the way? What are the dimensions of this room? I mean, I don't know offhand, but it's like the length and the width, right? So it's a pair of numbers. Maybe it's, I don't know, 30 feet by 30 feet or whatever. Is this room a square? Maybe. I don't know. All right, so what do we know? Length is 200 more yards than the width, than twice the width. Twice the width. Length is 200 more than twice the width. So L is equal to twice the width plus 200. All right? That's the first thing you need to do, or the second. Anyway, it's something you need to do. You need to convert that sentence to an appropriate mathematical equation, right? That's most of the problem. What's the other thing? The area is 40,000. What's that tell us? What's the area? Yeah, area is length times width is 40,000. So again, what does this have to do with quadratic equations? What should we do? What we want to do is take this formula and plug it into that L, and what will that give us? That will give us 2w plus 200, right, times w equals to 40,000. How do you solve that? Yep. Quick question. Is the importance of yard squared important, or is that just because it's in the context of area being like times width, that's fine for its system? Well, so yes, if you want to be sticklers for units, I could be writing 40,000 yards squared, and I could be writing 200 yards here, you know? But um, I leave units off calculations in math classes with the understanding that I'm going to work in the same system of units for all the equations. This is okay as long as you don't have some annoying book that gives you like some stuff in feet and some stuff in yards and then if you just treat it all like it's all feet or all like it's all yards and don't pay attention to like the need to convert things then you get in trouble. But here, it's all yards, so I'm working in yards. And then, um, great, so this is going to give us 2w squared plus 200w minus 40,000 equals to zero. I highly recommend that we do not solve that equation yet. What should we do?
What should we do? Thank you, sir. Yep. Find this, complete the square. Complete the square is a good idea, but before we do that. Quadratic equation. Yep. Um, oh, well that wasn't, I was in the restroom. that's not very exciting. Can we factor out the two? Factor out the two. I take your factor out two and raise you a divide by two. So dividing by two, which we can do here, why? This is an equation, right? So I can divide by it. I can just divide by a number. Our context, last class, was factoring. There we can't just divide by a number and just get rid of it, right? It's not allowed. But here we can. So divide by 2, we get w squared plus 100w minus 20,000 equals to 0. Now, um, Someone has suggested completing the square. So as you know, like a moth to a flame, I cannot resist. So, um, mm -hmm. so completing the square here gives me w plus 50, quantity squared, minus, what's 50 squared? Um. 2,500, I think, yeah. And um, so what we got is we got w plus 50, quantity squared, is equal to 22,500, which then using the square root property give me W plus 50 is plus or minus the square root of 22,500, also known as 150. So W, I'll write it over here, is equal to minus 50 plus or minus 150. Am I wrong about the square root? If I am, let me know. I'm kind of sick, so like, don't trust my arithmetic. It could be askew. Making you guys work to see these equations, huh? I <laughs> see how you guys like craning your necks, like, you need to get like a periscope or something. <coughs> We should have like mirrored ceilings, you know? She could like look up on the ceiling and see what's on the board. All right, anyway, we got two answers. What are they? W is equal to minus 200 or W is equal to, what's minus 50 plus 150? Well, 100, right? Which one of these is a physically reasonable answer? The 100, right? Yeah, we can't, we definitely can't have negative, <laughs> negative width. So if we have 100 for the width, then what's that tell me the length is? Two times the width, right? 400. Exactly. So 100, what are the dimensions? Dimensions are, um, 100 yards by 400 yards. So we do, we do want to, you know, you guys asked me about units. We would like to put units in our answer. We'd like to have the correct units in the answer. So there's, there's a pretty standard way of writing the answer in this case. 100 by 400. Those are the dimensions. Now, I completed the square to solve this quadratic equation. What's another way you could have done it? What's that? Anybody? <coughs> Nobody? Factor. factor? Yeah, probably, probably you could have factored that, right? I don't know. The numbers are kind of big. It's hard to see factoring here. But anyway. So if the numbers are big, you can't see factoring, right? and you're afraid of completing the square for some unknown reason, then what should you do? You should use the quadratic formula, right? You can fall back on that. But if you use that, be careful, right? Okay, next up. 
let's skip ahead a bit here. If I can, sorry, I'm looking. 47, maybe 35, 47. Oh, yeah. All right, let's work number 47. So here we have a um, <clears throat> what are we given? There's another problem I'm looking for. I don't know. I'm, anybody worked the recommended homework in section 1.5 already? Anybody ahead? No? I feel like there are problems about like products of integers. Did I assign any of those? Or have I been kind to you guys and just not done those? I got 23, 27, 31, 35, 47. 23, 27, 27, 30, what I say, 35, and then 47. Okay, so I see. I, I have kept with a theme for this, this uh, semester's applied problems. They're all geometric in nature. All right. There's other problems in this section about like products of integers. I think I have not given you those problems. Unless they're in the section 3.1. We'll see. All right, so how do we solve this one? So an astronaut on the moon throws a, so this is problem number 47 in section 1, um, section 1.5, number 47, <coughs> right? Let's read the problem together. Right, the first thing to do with an applied problem is to read the problem and make sure you understand it. Make sure you understand what you're given, what you're trying to find, right? So we have an astronaut on the moon, there's a basketball upward, the astronaut is six foot six inches tall, the initial velocity of the ball is 30, I need my glasses, um, I think feet per second, um, let's see here. The height s of the ball in feet is given by the equation that. So the first thing I'm going to do in my solution is I'm going to write that down. s equals to minus 2.7 t squared plus 30t, all right, plus 6.5. So right there, that is telling us what? That is the height of the ball in feet, right, after t seconds. So then what does he ask us? Height of the ball on the moon, right? So what's here? Question part A. After how many seconds is the ball 12 feet above the moon's surface, round to the nearest hundredth? So how do we answer part A? What, what do we have to solve? Anybody? What would we do to solve part A? Yeah? Set the equation. Right, we should set the formula to 12 because the formula gives us the height. Just focusing. You would have gotten it, Michael. It's a matter of time. Let's see here. Um, don't worry, we still got an equation to solve. There's still more to do. So <clears throat> we're up against 12, right? 12 is equal to minus 2.7 t squared plus 30t plus 6.5. How do we solve this equation? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it as minus 2.7t squared plus 30t. What is 6.5 minus 12? Minus, what is it, Min minus 5.5? Minus 5.5? That is equal to zero. 
Now, you won't find me saying this much in here, but this is a problem for the quadratic formula. It's got ugly decimals, it's got minus signs. Completing the square here would be a total drag, all right? So I wouldn't do it. I would use, I would use the quadratic formula. And so the quadratic formula, I gotta identify what's, what I'm up against. I have A is minus 2.7, I have B is 30, I have C is minus 5.5, right? In the ABC of the quadratic formula. What did the quadratic formula state? Here the quadratic formula states that AT squared plus BT plus C equals to zero has solution T is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. We all but derived this last class, all right? That's the quadratic formula. So let's put it into practice. In this problem, we're up against minus parentheses minus 2.7 plus or minus the square root of minus 2.7 quantity squared. Now you could drop the minus in the square, it wouldn't hurt you. And then we've got minus 4 times parentheses uh, minus 2.7 times parentheses minus 5.5. Mind the minuses, they do matter. And then divided by 2a, which is, what's 2 times 2.7? It's 5.4, so minus 5.4. What's that? Oh man. Oh man. Wow. You guys should just switch sections. Like it's not worth it, you know? I mean just just give up. Dr. Putney, I hear he's very pleasant. Um will it will this be on the quiz? Will the will this be on the quiz? Yeah. If you want, sure. Uh is it really? I mean, I don't usually put this kind of thing on the quiz because it would eat up a lot of time, but it could be on the test. So, <clears throat> yes, I am supposed to put B where B is supposed to go, right? Of course, you're welcome for me making this error on mistake for your learning. So there's supposed to be a 30. <coughs> this was supposed to be a 30. There we go. Thank you. So I encourage you guys to get this calculator. The reason I do that, among other things, is if I go mode, and then I go five equation, and then I go three quadratic, all I have to do is put minus 2.7 for A, 30 for B, and 6.5 excuse me, minus 5.5 for my C, and it tells me the answers. <laughs> In particular, 10.92-ish, or 0.1865-ish. Uh, I got 927. Oh. Let me just cheat for a second here. This is number 47, right? <coughs> Good gracious. At the end of these PDFs, there should be the answers. So we're in section, what? I want my money back. Daniel. Seriously? What? All right. I'm gonna have to talk to that boy. Man, I'm gonna have to scan the book myself, I swear. I just have a gun. Happy Labor Day. That's right, if you want, if you want something done right, 
Do it yourself. I'll tell you what, those are good words to live by. Usually. Although I don't really, like when the septic tank needs to be fixed, like I don't live by those words. All right, I was, I was at something. I lost my place, guys. Give me a second here. Oh, here we are. Back, back again. All right. <coughs> Anybody else confirm or deny my numbers? I'll work it out again. 30, what's your mode? I have 30, I square it. Then I... I got three minuses, so I subtract four times 2.7 times 5.5. The thing under the square root I got is 840.6. I square root that thing. I subtract 30 from that. I divide by 2 times 2.7, which is 5.4. Yeah, I got that. And let's see here. Minus 30 plus the square root of 860, I think I said. And then I divide by 5.4. Huh. What'd you guys get for this one? Yep. Six point five minus twelve. The twelve makes a drop to that, yeah. It's okay. <coughs> Michael, you have your book. Oh, I have a book. Mm-hmm. You have the back of the book too? Or not really. I know you don't believe in checking answers. Because you because you said and I quote it was cheating. Yes. But I'm not like you. I sometimes cheat. I just want to confirm or deny my answer here. And I don't want to walk all the way back to my office to get the book. Oh, um, Miss. Um, one point one point five. Just a second, guys. One point five. Number forty-seven. Yep. Yeah. It says point one, point one nine, nine seconds. seconds. <coughs> point one nine seconds. All right. I think this ten point nine two is wrong. The other number I just got was. Oh, so you need to round. I'm not sure about this. I think the other number should be negative. What did you guys get for this other one? I think my calculator just let me down. Man, that's annoying. So minus thirty. Um, so what's? Cook? Yes. Uh, I thought this is wrong for me, but when I do problems for homework, can I look at the back to check my answers? Yes, yes. I would encourage all of you to check the answers in the back of the book. That's what it's for. That is why I've assigned you odd problems, so you can check the answers in the back. I got you. That's on purpose. Yeah. So minus four times. If I assign an even problem, it's because I really like that problem. All right, so the thing under the square root, the square root, this, this number right here, guys, I get, and you should get, 28.993. Do you guys get that? Oh, 28.993. You guys need to be able to do these kind of calculations on the test, which is upcoming. You, so, like, you should be figuring this out alongside. Is this the final answer? Um, is it the final answer? So that, you got to be careful, right? Because that minus 30 is what? Minus 1.00 blah, 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 blah. If I divide that by 5.4, I get... What? Oh, I got this. So the other one's... I'm an idiot. So, look, if we take the minus, what happens? We get what? Minus? Minus 30... Minus 28 point... Good grief. 
5.993 gives me a minus 58.993. I divide by, divide by 5.4. I get, oh, you know what, you know what happened, guys? I just missed a minus in my calculator. That's all that happened. It's because I'm an idiot. Look, so if I'd used my calculator correctly to start with, I would have just written that down and we could have been to this point three minutes ago or five minutes ago, whatever it has been. <coughs> so, which one of these is the reasonable answer? The positive one. Right, the positive. So this is the answer and then like your your book says 0 0.9 0 0.19 seconds so it's I think it's because it says round to the what the nearest hundredth so rounding to the nearest hundredth gives us that then part B what's the question how many seconds will it take for the ball to hit the surface how many so what would that be how will we have to solve to get that when when will the ball hit the moon's surface well we wouldn't solve equal to 12 we would solve equal to what Man, there is, this just will not come, I don't know what's going on, there's like some kind of, it's got like pepper on it. <laughs> I cannot get this stuff off. So we would have to solve S equals to zero to find when it hits the surface again, right? Which means we have to solve the quadratic equation. Minus 2.7 T squared plus 30 T plus 6.5 equals to zero. I would recommend that we use the quadratic equation again to solve that. All right? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm working kind of slow today, guys. I, teaching this 815 class makes recovery from a cold unlikely. Get used to me being sick. It's probably going to be the rest of the semester. Um, so, we know how to solve this, right? T is equal to minus 30 plus or minus the square root of 30 squared minus 4 times minus 2.7 times 6.5 all divided by minus 5.4 because that's 2 times 2.7. And if you work that out, what do we get? <laughs> we get crunch the numbers here. 11.32 or minus 0 0.213. So which one of these is, so do you understand why the math does that? So like you got this guy, right? And he's doing what? He's throwing the ball upward, right? So like a picture of it, something like this. So the math doesn't know the difference between the ball leaving his hand here and it coming from the ground with the same velocity to make it like match where it left his hand. So the math gives you one of the solutions being minus 0.2313. That's like if hypothetically an ant had thrown the ball from the ground to such that it lined up with his hand with the same speed, it would be the same trajectory. But of course, the one we're interested in is this one, right? So the answer is 11.32 seconds later, it hits the ground. So to summarize, the applications that you need to learn are the ones like the recommended homework. So just try to work through them, see if you can understand them. If you get stuck on one of them, you can ask me some other day. Um, and of course, you know, work the problems in the uh, in the mission that are applied as well. That brings us to section 3.1, <clears throat> which is on what? Quadratic functions and models, right? So here we have some problems from 
3.1, things like graphs of, graphs of quadratic equations, right? So I need to tell you how do we graph quadratic equations, okay? So let's, let's get into that. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the projector because we don't really need the projector anymore at this point. So. So the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola. Do you guys know what a parabola is? Yes. 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 Well, what is it then? It looks like, looks like this. OK. Could you define it like geometrically? No, like in terms of a geometric principle. Like, for example, um, a circle is the set of all points which is equidistant from what? A center point, right? Like the collection of all points, the same distance from the center point, right? What's a parabola? Nobody? So a parabola is the collection of all points that are equal distance from a line called the directrix and a focal point called the focus. This is a parabola. So you have a line, a so-called directrix, and a focal point. And this is the principle with which we make like parabolic reflectors, right? They put the, the light at the focal point, and then it makes the light rays hit the parabolic reflector and come out all like straight, you know, like that. Anyway, let us talk about the graphs of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Number one, if we can write y is equal to a times x minus r1 times x minus r2, then um, r1 comma 0 and r2 comma 0 are x intercepts. All right. What's the y-intercept of the graph? You're looking at ax squared plus bx plus c. What would the y-intercept be for this like generic quadratic? Can you guys tell me where the y-intercept would be here? You just got to look at the top equation, right? If we put x equals to 0, we get what? y equals 2? None of that. None of that. Just that, right? y equals to c. So 0c is y-intercept. So if you have your quadratic factor, that's wonderful you know where the x-intercepts are. That pretty much pins down what it looks like, right? Number two. If A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. That's pretty easy, right? The leading coefficient. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. We can, we can, we can put that into practice, not a our problem. Number three. And this is the one that's a little bit, a little bit more su subtle, but it's actually pretty simple. If y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, then h comma k is the vertex of the parabola. Now, we can find formulas for the vertex. Let's find some formulas for the vertex. So what are, what are formulas for the vertex? 
So um, check this out. So we have y is a times x minus r1 times x minus r2, right? If we multiply this out, what do we get? ax squared plus what? a times, um, well, I should say minus a times r1 plus r2 times x plus a r1 r2. So all I've done here is just foil out the formula. I foiled out the formula. Um, now what, what's that equal to? It's still equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So we can do what's called equate the formula, equate the coefficients, and we can see from this a couple formulas. One of the formulas we can see is a equals to a. The formula a equals to a, we don't care about, right? It's like a equals a, yay, who cares? However, this one right here, minus a times r1 plus r2 is equal to b. That's pretty nice. That says that <coughs> the sum of the roots r1 plus r2 is equal to minus b over a. That's probably useful to know about. The sum of the roots is the ratio of minus the b coefficient to the a coefficient. Okay, great. I don't really use that too much, but there it is. What else do we have here? a times the product of the roots is equal to c. You use these you use these in factoring. This is just that thing you do where the sum of the roots has to be equal to the coefficient of x and the product of the roots has to be equal to the constant coefficient. Like these formulas are just that in our current notation. But how about this h and this k? That's kind of wacky, right? Well, let's multiply that out. So we get y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. If I multiply this out, what do I got? All right, so collecting things, we've got ax squared, no one cares, um, minus 2ahx plus ah squared plus k. This is still equal, this is still equal to the original ax squared plus bx plus c. So I can equate coefficients and I can find formulas. And the formulas I find are this. See this? Well, first of all, I get a equals a. Again, no one cares, right? This matches that. Hooray, who cares, right? But this right here matches that right there. That's pretty nice. That says that minus 2ah is equal to b. So lo and behold, we have a formula. h is minus b over 2a. That's worth knowing. Location of vertex in the x sense. That's where it is horizontally speaking. Where is it vertically speaking? Well, we also have <coughs> ay, ay, ay. I hope your cough feels better. Thank you, Michael. Um, this one is equal to that one, right? And so that gives me a h squared plus k is equal to c. What formula does that give us for, for the, the y component of the vertex? I mean, we're about to find the formula here. Sorry to the people watching at home. There you go. <coughs> ay, ay, ay. So if I solve, I get what? I get k equals to c minus a h squared. But we'd like, to write, we'd like to find a formula just in terms of a, b, and c. So if we plug in the h formula here, we get k is equal to c minus 
a times b over 2a, minus b over 2a squared, which simplifies to k is equal to c minus b squared over 4a. So if you want, there are plug and chug formulas to locate where the vertex of a parabola is. All right? Now, I would recommend that you rather instead use the vertex form of the parabola just to graph directly. Like, let me show you some examples of this. So, like, example one if we have y is equal to like 3 times x minus 2 quantity squared minus 4, I look at this and I can tell you where the vertex is. Where's the vertex? Think about this. The vertex is where the, where the quadratic is either largest or smallest. When is this formula largest or smallest? Well, it's smallest when that square is just zero, right? So how do you get that? You put x equals to 2. And when you put x equals to 2, what is the formula output? Remember, this goes, if I plug in 2, oh, no, no, if I plug in 2 here, this goes away. I get 0 plus 4. Oh, minus 4, my bad, minus 4. So the vertex is there. What's the y-intercept of this? I got to think about that. So that's where x is equal to 0, right? So if we put y is equal to 3 times 0 minus 2 squared minus 4, what's that give us? Three times four is twelve. Twelve minus four is eight. Right? This is this is eight. And that's all I need. See, because if I know where the vertex is, right? And I know where the y-intercept is, I can graph it. There's another relation I haven't gotten my paws on yet today here, but let's see here. Two minus four, so. One, two, three. so about like here, its y-intercept is eight, so look up here-ish, so I will try. I tried. There's the graph of this parabola. What if it doesn't come like that? How could you make the vertex appear? What if we had like, you know, y is equal to, oh, I don't know, x squared, you know, plus 8x. Um, well, yeah, just like that. Where's the, where's the vertex here? Well, first of all, how would you graph this? Do you need the vertex? Maybe you don't. I'll find it though. So this is x minus uh, x plus four, right? Squared minus sixteen, right? On the other hand, I can do what? I can just factor this as x times x plus eight, right? Each one of these formulas reveals something geometrically about the parabola that we're looking at. So looking at those formulas, guys, you tell me, where are the x-intercepts? Where are the x-intercepts for this parabola? <coughs> Nobody? Yes, but where are the x-intercepts for this parabola? 
And, wh and what's the vertex? Where's the vertex? This tells me what? The vertex is where? Yeah? Negative 4, negative 16, vertex. Very good. Assuming I haven't made some stupid mistake here, right? But yeah. Where's the x-intercepts? From this, you can see x-intercepts where? I heard 0, 0, and minus 8, 0, right? Very good. This is a kind of funny parabola, isn't it? Because the x-intercept is the y-intercept in this one. Isn't that funny? Well, I'm easily amused, so I think it's funny. But, you know, you guys don't have to sign on if you don't want to. Um, but here it is. Minus 4, minus 16. Let me draw a dot. Sometimes it's helpful to draw a dotted line. Like on the... Um, oh, minus 4, minus 16. My bad. Try this again. <coughs> All right. So the vertex is at like minus 4. And it's like minus 16 down. So it's like here-ish. It's got x-intercepts at 0, 0 and at minus 8, 0. Right? The dotted line I, wrote, I drew is the axis of symmetry of the parabola. It's always this way. The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex of the parabola, and the x-intercepts, if it has any, they're symmetric on one side and the other of the, of the line of symmetry. So the graph here looks like <coughs> something kind of like this. So for graphing parabolas, I mostly want you guys to be able to find x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the vertex, and of course like the axis of symmetry, you got to be able to find that. What's the axis of symmetry? It's kind of stupid. It's just x equals to the x-coordinate of the vertex. So the axis of symmetry here is x equals minus 4. Let's look at another one. What if we have y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 5. Can we graph this? So this is x plus 2 squared plus 1 if we complete the square. And I know I'm going kind of fast. I'm sorry about that. I spent too long punching numbers in my calculator earlier today. It's my bad. Anyway, that's completing the square. Where's the vertex? Vertex at? My, Oh, negative, uh, uh, no, no. Negative 2? Negative 2, 1. Negative 2, 1, that's right, vertex. That's where it is. How about the y-intercept? Where's the y-intercept for this? Y-intercept is at 0, 5. Let's graph this thing. Remember, the vertex is the smallest it ever gets. So what are the x-intercepts for this one? That's a kind of trick question. Does this one have any x-intercepts? It does not, right? Does a parabola have to have x-intercepts? Nope. And the ones that don't have x-intercepts are precisely the ones that if you set them equal to zero, the solution is complex. Fun fact, guys. H is always going to be equal to root 1 plus root 2 <coughs> divided by 2. So if you want to know, if you want to know where the, the vertex is, if you know the x-intercepts, you can just take the average of them. Between them is where the vertex is always found. Anyway, I think that's a, that's a good place for us to stop today. Give me a second here to get back and turn off that thing before you guys scatter. <laughs> Thank you.